Alright guys, welcome back. I just wanted to show a few more updates that I learned how I'm going to set up my chart. So the first chart that I'm going to set up, I'm going to set up the daily chart. So just to look at the overall picture, but I'm going to show you some things to do to make it. So right now it looks like line graphs. So we're going to switch this, click on settings, go to chart type, go to standard, and now it's going to look like bars, which is what I like to see. I like to keep the color green for money and down for red. Then I hit OK. And then also what you want to do is under that settings, you want to click show extended hours. So it actually sh will show the extended hours on it as well. So you can see where is the stock going. Because you can see the price changing here. So you can see where it's going. Next, you change the boxes there. <clears throat> now you want to put start putting on events. You want to know when is earnings. So you put click on events, click on earnings. And see the little E come up? So I'll do it again. You can click it off. Now there's no E. But look at this area. You click on the earnings. And now it's saved. Earnings will show you. And you can look at when Tesla has earnings, what happens. And it even shows you what they made, whether it was earnings 24 cents a share on January 27th. And then you can kind of get an idea like when their next earnings would be, which is right here. So they had January. Then they had April over here. And it's just really cool. You can compare the cents to see where they were. And look at that big rush up from 850. So you saw earnings here at a dollar two per share, and then a 1.44 per share. So they really killed it. So it just shows you another thing that you could add. And I just want to, if you want to save it, you click on the layouts, that, and then save. And then now we want to start adding our indicators. So our indicators, I always like to start with RSI. I think RSI is definitely a really good one to start with. And you see it come down here. Now, if you really want to get more specific, you can change your RSI settings, which is definitely useful. So RSI should be showing. Oh, there it is. Okay, so RSI is here. You can modify it. You click down here, and you can change the color of it. So this line won't be blue if you want to change the color. I like to just keep it blue to keep it simple. You can change the thickness. None of that is a change. You can change this, though, and <clears throat> you can make it tighter lines. So you can make it 55 and you can make it 45. I'm just showing you an example because look how much different now that now the line here between the red and the green are right here and you can see when it breaks through you can see right here when it breaks this green line right here and it starts coming up you can see there's a trend up so it's definitely something to look into and in, even right here you see it looks like it's selling off selling off on the daily chart and then you can see it come down. So let's click that to today Put that on daily, which is what we like. Okay, and then now we can go to indicators. Click in EMA. And I like to put in three of them because I like to have the 9, the 20, and the 50, and it pops up here. You see this blue line representing the 20 EMA. So the first one I like to do is I have them set up in a color way that I recognize them. So I do red for my 9. You change the date right here, the period, so it's on 9. Then what you do is you go indicators again, type in EMA, click it again, and now you have another EMA, which is blue, but you it's a 20 EMA. And because I have certain colors that I like to use for it, I do that, I switch it to the 20, and then click. And then what I do is I can compare it to what I have in my previous one. So my one minute, I have the red, orange, and then green. Red for 9 orange for 20, and green for the 200 EMA. So I go back to my daily. I'm just checking it. It's orange for the 20, and then it's green for my 200. So you can go back into your indicators, go into EMA again, because I like to have three EMA, and I'll explain why in a second. And then I'm going to add this, modify, switch this to color green. So now when I go through it and switch this to the 200 EMA, and there's my 200 EMA. And you can see Tesla's always been bullish this whole time because it hasn't tested the EMA. The only time it's tested the EMA was right here. And that was a telltale sign that it's probably going to get a bounce because it held the EMA. Once it held the 200 EMA, it just started building and holding that, that momentum. So that's definitely something to definitely look into. Let me just save this. I like to save as I go. You can save your template as you go. And now, the let me see another indicator I think would be useful to use. We got the RSI up. We have the volume. I do like the Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Bands are something to consider. You can use Bollinger Bands to see like if it's really you know oversold. And you can see here is at the bottom of the Bollinger Bands. 
And here, look at the top part. It just it didn't matter. It just kept going up to the moon. But once it was up here, even the RSI was very high at the 80, and the Bollinger Bands was high. So it's definitely something to look into there. And I think it's definitely very useful. You can have your 200 EMA, so you can have a guide. So even when you're day trading something, you're day trading Tesla, and you have you have your 200 EMA in green, and your 9 is your red EMA, and your orange is your 20 EMA. If it looks like it's just too much, go to the daily. You switch over here on the top chart. You switch to the daily. You get a big. You get a better picture of what's actually happening, or the five minute, and you can take a look at what's happening to get an idea. That's how I like to do it. So I can go in and out and get an idea of how things are trading. Just when I look at these videos and I'm making like my charts and my indicators, I like to always try to keep everything simple. I keep everything the same for each tab that I go through. So when I switch to like the three month, I know that my, you know, my, my EMA nine, red, orange, yellow, green, I have my RSI on the bottom. Some other things I like to do sometimes is you can really tighten up your RSI. So right here, I went under my RSI here. I click on it, I modify it, and you can make this, instead of 70-30, you can make it like, if you want to get a tighter spread on it, just watch the graph. I make it the oversold, I should make this the other way around. Over, overbought is 55, oversold at 45. And then you look here at the green and the red. And now it's just gonna keep two tighter bars, but I can see that if it gets up here, it'll still show an RSI of like 67 if it's up here, you know, like it's up here but like it gives you a better indicator of where it's gonna go. So it just gives you an idea. And it's nice to see that like in context. You can also use ADX. ADX is something I'm trying out. I'm not really sure how much this works and I don't understand it 100%, but I'll just give my best go at it. If you look here where it blasts up, they say when the green will pass the red line, which I don't even know if that really correlates because they're saying the red is the minus and the green is the plus. So I wouldn't really follow that one too much. But when it comes to RSI, the volume, EMA, I think that's very important. I think your best tool is sometimes looking at the one month EMA. Like Lucid Stock is a great example because you can see that it's trading above the 200 EMA, this green line. And the orange line is our 20 EMA. It's still trading above. And look, once it, once it broke the 9 EMA, it was going to test the 20 EMA at the orange. And then once it started going even lower, it retests back to get back to the 9 EMA. So it just shows you that like you can get ideas of when to start trading or if a stock is still bullish. So just looking at the one-year daily chart, you can see that you know Lucid could potentially, it has to get above this 40 mark to stay bullish. But if it does sell off, you got a nice little bounce potentially around $29.30, which it'll really test that EMA. But you know you can use other indicators to try to keep it more simple. So let's switch over to one month to give it a little better view. But it shows you the one month right here is where it shows the 30 on the 200, and then it's trading at the nine, and then you have the 20 right there, which I like to see. <clears throat> when I mainly trade, I use the one minute and the five minute for quick scalps. Or when I'm looking to swing trade, I love using the one month or the three month chart, just to get a good idea of the overall picture to see if this stock is bullish. Is the trend in my favor that it's trading up? If it keeps bouncing off the nine EMA, it's good to take potential swing trades when you get sell offs from like $45 down to 38, you think, okay, I'll take a position because it's on this EMA and if it breaks it, I'll, I'll have my stop loss. But then if it trends up, you're getting like a few points out of this. So it's just something to think about when you're trying to swing trade to get an idea. Let me switch this over as well because that's on the one, that's on the three month. But definitely something to look into. Use the RSI, use the indicators, use the EMA. It definitely just helps upscale your game a little bit because you can look at the overall picture and you can just, Fidelity makes it nice and easy where you can just trend through and take a look. You know, these are my dailies, the one minute and the five minute. And look how the picture varies much differently from here with the 200 EMA, like they're all gonna be the same, but they're viewed out more where you can get a better picture of what is actually happening. And like, if I'm gonna swing trade, do I really wanna buy this on the three month? And look at that, bounce right off the, th the nine month EMA right back up. Test it again, went back up. Test it again, failed, goes right to the 20 and then fails again and then comes down. And then it just always retests these lines. So 
it's definitely something to think about. It gives you a perspective of what's actually happening. And then a stock that I always love day trading, you can see where is it really going here. And you can look at the overall, like the three-month chart on AMC, using your EMA lines to get an idea. And right now, when I go out, I want to go on the one-year mark because I want to look at the 200 EMA. Look, so it's testing that 200 EMA right now, and it's below it. So it's a bearish sign that it looks like AMC could potentially just keep selling off. You know, and when, and oh, I didn't mean to do that. And let me just switch this back to three months. So when you're trading this, you want to look at the overall picture. I'm at the six month chart now, and you can get a good idea of, you know, should I really be trying to swing trade this? Because it needs to get above this 20 EMA to start trading. And that, that's what I like to use if I'm going to start, if I'm not going to scalp and I'm actually going to go for swing trades, I think it's a good idea to really look into it and get an idea. Because you can start to see whether a stock is going to start reversing or not. Now, I know this chart could be a lot. So you definitely want to take it slow with the, the amount of indicators you're going to use. But it definitely gives you perspective when you're looking at stocks and you're like, well, should I buy? Should I not buy? You should definitely have these three EMAs. They definitely are crucial because you can watch the trends and you can see just on my screen with the three months and seeing when it retests these EMAs, you're getting bounces. So it's definitely something to look into. And it, look, when AMC sold off from $30, $40, all the way down to the low of, you can see the lows here. So when I click on this, it goes to 26. It was testing the 200 EMA. And then you got a nice bounce back up from 27 back up to 32. And then it failed again at the nine and then went back down. So it's just something to look into. I think this could offer a lot of valuable, you know, trading tools for you. And I think, I think, I really believe that Fidelity really gives a good swing trading opportunity for any stock that you look to play because you can use these indicators to give yourself the best opportunity possible and to follow a stop loss because you can see what's a realistic trade and what's not.